How did you find your profession in making books, or how did it find you? Well, I had uh, I had thought I wanted to be a sports writer, and uh, I went to Manual Arts High School in Los Angeles. Manual Arts, just what the words say, had uh, had shops of all kinds. One of the things they had was a, quite a complete uh, printing department. We had a daily paper, uh, the Manual Arts Daily, and I was the sports editor and my best friend was editor of the Daily. So we put out a really good little newspaper and I had to make, it was all letterpress of course, and I um, made up my page every day and wrote a column every day for that. So um, yeah, I was pretty well prepared. Got into uh, the printing business because I had a couple of friends who'd been at USC, one of them through the ROTC with me, and uh, they uh, had a family printing business. And I, since I'd worked in high school uh, at the print shop, and I still was interested in journalism, I'd taken courses at USC and, and written for the Daily Trojan while I was there. Uh, so, in printing, you're dealing with the written word, and it it all seemed uh, uh, of a piece to me the idea of working in the printing business. So I worked for them for several years, and then left to go into business with myself in 1959. We wanted to print beautiful photographs, so they looked like the photographs and the gray printing. Didn't, didn't really per permit that. Then I had a close friend who uh, was a graphic designer after we'd been in business for a few years. And uh, he, his name was David Boss. And he was a designer and uh, a very good one. And also very interested in sports as I was. And uh, he became um, friends with Pete Rosell and did design work for Pete Rosell, who was general manager of the Rams before he became commissioner in the National Football League. And uh, so we did some work for the Rams. And, uh, and uh, one year, moving ahead a little bit, we, we did the Ram yearbook and financed it ourselves. It was the year they had a strike and uh, uh, the football strike. Yeah, yeah, and so we didn't, weren't able to sell the yearbook uh, the way we thought we could. So it wasn't financially successful, but it, it brought a lot of, of attention to us because we could print half tones well. And this was, as I say, a little bit before uh, people were doing color. Uh, I mean, a lot of people were doing color. The more far-sighted people were but uh, a lot of people were still printing black and white. So you had brochures that were black and one other color, which was were called duotones. And we, we started out and we're doing, we did really excellent duotones from the beginning. And, um, and uh, we're not, it was a year or two before, three maybe, before we bought a color a full color press. Uh, so, anyway, that uh, that kind of pointed us in the direction when we got into the color printing. How did you meet Ansel Adams? We had done some printing for the University of California at Riverside. They had an excellent collection of photography there, and they had many Ansel Adams pieces. They did a brochure about their uh, collection, and among uh, other photographs were several of Ansel's. So Ansel received a copy of that brochure or soft cover book. It was probably like 24 or 36 pages. So he was impressed with the printing, and he uh, wrote a letter to the Chancellor of University of California, Riverside. Uh, asked who had done the printing, praised the printing on the book. And so they sent back to him and told him it was us. So Ansel 
uh, talked to a fellow named Jim Allender, and Jim, very active still in photography. At the time, he was uh, director of the Friends of Photography, which was founded by Ansel. Uh, shortly after that, we, we met Ansel and did some other reproductions of his work. There was a, there was a book, it was the portfolios of Ansel Adam. It's a popular book, still in print. Ansel hadn't been particularly unhappy with the printing of that book, but um, once he saw ours, he, he was unhappy with the printing of the book. So uh, he told the publisher that he it, it came up for a reprint. It had it had sold out in its first edition. I believe it sold out in three years, and uh, and he wanted to uh, redo it. So naturally, they were kind of taken aback by that because uh, a publisher makes money on the reprints, and he doesn't have to incur the cost of of developing another set of negatives. But that's what Ansel wanted to do. And Ansel said, well, just uh, raise the price of the book if it costs more. So uh, that's what they did. They raised it a lot more than the difference in the printing costs. We weren't, I don't know how we compared exactly with the other printer, but uh, we weren't anything like the difference in what they added to the book. It introduced us, we were fortunate because it, if you were printing for Ansel Adams, people took it for granted you were a good printer, and, and, and indeed you were. Uh, 